looking at the way that this issue has been talked about, these, this new technology has been talked about over the last year or two. It's a really, really new issue. It turns out that there are some folks working on uh, humanitarian uses, some folks working on how to re restrict police abuse of this new technology, but nobody that has a sort of larger framework for how civil society can use this new technology for the public good. So we found it necessary to actually build a framework that represents some of what we feel are the best practices for use it for a civil society use of drones for the public good. I first had this idea when I was looking at the way that social movements have estimated um, protest size and it turns out that for the last 50 or 60 years the formula has remained unchanged the way that we estimate how large a protest is. And I had this idea when I saw sort of drones being used increasingly by the general public, I thought this is a great way for scholars of social movements, social movement actors themselves, to actually take new technology and bring it, it to, uh, to apply it actually to the work that they do to understand protest, protest dynamics, but especially protest size. So we've designed a very simple and easy to use method uh, for counting the crowds. Uh, prior to counting the crowd, we made a series of area measurements uh, in order to determine what the area is covered uh, by the picture. Then we uh, applied the grid on the picture and then we counted the crowd according to different density levels. So by using previous theoretical knowledge and by employing the current innovative uh, technologies, we've designed this method. And honestly speaking, we didn't use any help from developers, engineers or IT people we just did it on ourselves. So if we can do it, every single NGO or civil society group across the world can use this. On the one hand, civil society is handed with a tool to better engage in the process of monitoring our liberal democracies, if you want. They get new technology to do this, but at the same time as policymakers, they need to better understand how drones function, how they operate, and what kind of, if any, but I would assume quite a bit, regulations are required to deal with this new technology. One of the safety processes we built into this is not to deploy this in the middle of a crowd, but actually to deploy a block or two away in a safe and open environment like this one. This device that we're using has a return to home function, which means that if we fly here, we're flying over a crowd and there's something, the technician has a problem, then this and, and a link is broken between the device and the controller, then the device itself will return back to where it launched from. Maybe filming demonstrations with a drone and uh, from, from the bird's view, you can, you can get more an ob objective view and an objective number of how many people are out there, uh, what's really happening, uh, who, is, who is doing what. You know, when, when, when someone says that the police attacked people, maybe it's, it's the opposite. Or when, the, when someone says that people are attacking the police, maybe the police started it. So you can't really get an objective view uh, when you are down on the street. But from, from a bigger perspective, you can, you can see much more. Establishing the size of a protest event is critical for social movements as they signal their legitimacy to the media, to the general public, and as they demonstrate their strength uh, to the authorities that they're challenging. So our submission highlights an innovation that combines off-the-shelf technology with existing social science methodologies to produce a novel drone use that we feel can be used simply and simply implemented by social movement actors around the world.